Tablighi Jamaat, A House Divided, Part 9, Lethal Ignorance. This episode is a bridge to the next episode, and I will cover three separate but interconnected concepts. The first of them is terrorism. Uh, the second is the propensity of the TJ to violence. And the third is something that's un unprecedented in human civilization, and that's the global pandemic lockdown due to the COVID-19 virus. So the first thing I'd like to say about terrorism is that episode will more than likely be composed of two parts. In the first of them, I will define or more specifically describe how it's very difficult to define exactly what terrorism is. Uh, then I will discuss what Zacharias Peary states um, about the TJ and their relationship to terrorism. The second thing is the propensity that the TJ have for violence. And from this, I will mention the book by Mohammed Qasim Zaman that's already preceded. And on page 133, he describes how the violence and the sectarian violence is almost exclusively Diobandi. And Diobandi is the sect or the strand that the TJ come from. He mentions on page 133. The ulama we have discussed in the foregoing, the high ranking ones and the peripheral are all Diobandi. And when I say Diobandi, you should uh, read their TJ because that is the dominant strand that the TJ come from. But are there further distinctions to be made within the ranks of the Diobandi ulama themselves, so far as sectarian radicalism is concerned? In an important recent study, Sayyid Vali Raza Nasr, so he quotes this other academic, has argued that sectarianism in contemporary Pakistan is the outcome and expression of the effort of one group of the Obandi ulama to dominate the religious and political landscape of the country. And then he gives examples and he gives names as well. So these two academics, firstly, Qasim Zaman, and secondly, Sayyid Vali Reza Nasr, are arguing that it's almost exclusively the Obandis, uh, in contemporary Pakistan that cause sectarian and religious uh, violence. And, it, well, the word he uses is radicalism, but he's talking about violence. This book itself gives several tables discussing um, violence and instances of death and killing. So it's the Diobandi strand that this generally comes from, and there's the proof for it there. The next thing um, is um, the sheer ignorance of one of the modern leaders of the TJ. And this is Molana Saad. <clears throat> and he's actually today being held, or he's not specifically being held, but he's actually out of the international scene because there are talks of manslaughter charges being brought against him. Here is an article. It says, India coronavirus, Tablighi Jamaat leader on manslaughter charge over COVID-19. And then there is the Wikipedia page. And the Wikipedia page, Wikipedia we know should be taken with a pinch of salt, but it states... A Tablighi Jamaat religious congregation that took place in Delhi's Nizamuddin Markaz Mosque, this is the one led by Mullah Nasad, uh, in early March 2020 was a coronavirus super spreader event. More than 4,000 confirmed cases and at least 27 deaths linked to the event reported across the, across the country, and over 9,000 missionaries may have attended the congregation and the majority of them being from the various states of India. The Minister of uh, Minority Affairs, 
Mukhtar Abbas Nakfi urged people not to hold the entire Muslim community for one group's crime. So it is clearly the TJ that was behind. And if you read the details of the article, they blatantly just uh, ignored dictates by the Indian government not to hold this event. And they made this event a super spreader event, which is, these are again, all new terms and new words, because this sort of event is, this sort of um, uh, occurrence has never occurred before in history. In this article by the Indian Express, it says, Molana Sa'ad, chief of the Tabligh, millions, and his tryst with infamy. It says that he, on March the 31st, uh, was slammed by Arvind, uh, 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 Chief Minister Arvind, for being very irresponsible and wrong by going ahead with his religious gathering and totally ignoring recommendations of social distancing. Saad's personal assistant, M. Alim, claims the TJ chief is at a relative's house in Delhi under self-quarantine. This flies in the face of police claims that they have been looking for Saad since the day the FIR was registered. So there's quite a lot of trouble stirring simply because of the ignorance of the heads of the TJ, specifically Mawlana Nasad. So the three things that I wanted to talk about to open this was, number one, terrorism, uh, number two, violence, and number three, in this case, medical ignorance leading to the death of dozens and the infection of thousands. This is only something that could come about from people that are ignorant. They don't understand how the modern world works and they are slow to react to current events. And then upon being charged or uh, the attempt being made to bring them to, upon charges of manslaughter, and the deaths, deaths and the infections of thousands, they simply put their heads in the sand. This is another sign of uh, a house unraveling. And if these charges do uh, are passed, and if they do actually take place, then again, this will be another co nail in the coffin of the TJ. Stay tuned for many more parts.